wait for a few more minutes, but maybe to answer Olivier's question, uh, it would be great if you uh, uh, type a message in the chat to um, at least let us know that you're hearing us and maybe also to answer the question. So what, what's kind of the experience of Laura one uh, that you already have? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it's not only Europe, it's Brisbane, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's, it's Asia. Maybe there are even some people from, well, I don't think they're from the US right now, but uh, they'll for sure join yeah. in later. Not yet, not even the East Coast is, uh, that's too early. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, regarding uh, experience. So we had a workshop earlier this week on gateway. So we built the gateway itself with a Raspberry Pi and a concentrator board. Then we stick everything together, flesh it with basic station. So that was really exciting. Um, and everyone, as far as I know, had a working device running the Arduino IDE um, and at least had some, some data sent over to, uh, to the pink stack. So uh, there's for sure some basic experience already in this group. That's good. Okay, so if you're ready, Olivier, then uh, I would love to kick off. Yeah, sure. Great, so um, Olivier, thanks a lot for joining the Things Academy. I'm very thanks. happy you are, you are here uh, and, uh, and, and, and found some time to, uh, to talk to us and to uh, everyone joining the Academy. So, am I. so to introduce you, so you are uh, one of the co-inventors of the LoRa technology, um, currently working for Semtech as a technical fellow in the wireless IP group. And you're also a vice chair of the technical working group of the LoRa Alliance. So before we dive in all of these technicalities about the technology, so maybe you want to say a few words about who you are and, and what you actually do at Semtech. Yeah, so I'm... Um... So I'm Olivier, I'm 45 years old, um, I am married, I have four children, and uh, actually the existence of Laura is an indirect consequence or is related to me being married with four children because um, I, I met my wife like 12 or 13 years ago. We were not living in the same place, so I decided to relocate to the south from Paris, to the south of France from Paris. And there I started to work in the same company as Nicolas Sorna, so a co-inventor of the LoRa technology, founder, co-founder with, with us of with Cleo. And that's 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 the reason, well, one of the reasons it started. We always wanted to 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 with Nicolas and other folks at university to do stuff together. And this was the opportunity when we eventually uh, came to work together so that's uh but the the odds were that laura is an indirect consequence of online dating so that's uh mm -hmm. I, that's one of my advices uh use online dating you're going to have surprises in your life some, <laughs> some of which are going to be very good um so, so yeah online dating yes so <laughs> with, that uh, eventually led to the whole laura one uh, technology well, that we as, use as program. one of the Causes, of course, <laughs> not the only one. Nice. So, nice. and in some so days, 13 years ago, and that, that's more or less where this whole Laura journey started for you. Yeah. So, uh, it started with discussions with um, Nicolas Sarna mm -hmm. uh, back in yeah 2008 or seven, and it was really at the beginning a technical challenge to do long range stuff. Everybody was was. I mean, all the industry was looking in the other direction as long range. Everybody was, was looking at short range, not because of short range, because the, the goal was then to have higher data rate. So 4G, uh, higher, higher, higher rate Wi-Fi, higher data rate Bluetooth. And we just as a challenge start to go the other way around. And then we, um, we found out that chirp modulation was the uh, right um, right thing to do to have long range and simple receiver mm -hmm. and i have one illustration to show to to explain that uh, and then thanks to my background in digital communication we, we added the uh, cyclic shifts which is the way we modulate the chirps mm -hmm. we cyclic shift every symbol and because that's that's fairly natural the cyclic shift when you do ofdm 
uh, that's I'm sorry, that's a bit technical, but OFDM is what you what you have with Wi-Fi. They use cyclic shift in Wi-Fi, but more experimentally for diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, cyclic shifts are used with uh, TV broadcast, digital yeah. television broadcasting, because cyclic shifts are seen as as a multipath from one base station to another base station. Well, broadcast tower from another mm -hmm. one. And um, and the other thing is we so that's 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 why from from a yeah. background it came um, so that I'm going to show that the why the chop are so good yeah please do yeah uh, yeah that one so you see that yeah so sorry it's a bit harsh uh, so. Oh, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so what, what are we seeing here, Olivier? So here we're seeing uh, graphs of frequency, instant frequency of a waveform of a transmitted signal versus time. Mm -hmm. And the chirp is, a, is really a linear function of time. So it in, linearly increases, then goes back to the initial frequency, linear increases, etc. Yeah. So these are unmodulated chirps. So that's what chirp is doing. The problem of long range is a problem of detecting. It's a problem of detecting a small thing, a small signal, which is usually below noise. So it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And usually that haystack is, has two dimensions. If you, if you are a GPS receiver, trying to look at a very, very low signal, the first dimension is time. So yeah. when is the, and that's called code phase uh, in the GPS uh, mm -hmm. uh, slang. So you need to listen so, at the right time. Yeah, yeah. You need to listen at the right time. You need to be synchronized in time. When mm -hmm. when do you start talking, or when do you, when do you start your slots? That that's the time, and yeah. you, and you need to be synchronized in frequency. Yeah. Because if you're not synchronized in frequency, it's just like when you're listening to the radio, you're listening to the wrong thing, or yeah. or it just doesn't work. So the good thing with chirps is that you don't need to to look in two dimensions, but you can only do the search. For detect for initial detection in a single dimension, and that, and this is because of this linear relationship between instant frequency versus time. So to illustrate this, here are three examples of different um, time and frequency offset between the transmitted chirp in blue and mm -hmm. the receiving chirp. So what you what you think synchronization is in the receiver, and you observe that the frequency difference is constant over time. Well, except here, but mostly constant over time. And these three situations, which corresponds to different time and frequency offsets, uh, result in the same frequency error here, yeah. which means that instead of having, so one dimension basically falls onto one, one other dimension. So you're only doing a single dimension, dimension search. And of course, single dimension search is much, much easier from a hardware perspective than two dimensional search. Yeah, that explains why with LoRa you can instantly receive an SF12 frame, which is 20 dB below noise. While in GPS, if you don't have assistance, I mean, with the first generation GPS, you you you, you had to wait maybe for four minutes before you you hit the first satellite because yeah. you were constantly searching for both frequency and time, and that's yeah. that's yeah, that's, exactly. that's that's the main reason. Yeah. So, okay. So that's the re that's one of the reasons why, even though there's so much noise and even like there's so much distance between the transmitter and the signal, you can still decode yeah. your signal. And 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 this simplicity of detection is also the reason why we can do cheap gateways. We can have a gateway which is constantly searching for LoRa signal like SF5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, other 8 or 16 frequency for on, on, on such a small board that, that, yeah. you've, that, you've, that you've played with uh, at the beginning of the week. That's, if it was a different spreading factor technology, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, sp sp spreading spectrum, spread spectrum technology, yep. it, it would have been much more complex. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One can actually mathematically demonstrate that chirp is the only waveform where you have some form of time frequency equivalence which yeah. means you're, you're doing a single dimensional search. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So another yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, so another illustration, which is more 
factual. So that's that's my house <coughs> in the south where I did the first measurement for range. So that's really a long time ago. And this is the first ever uh, LoRa IP board. By this time, it was only um, it was fully digital. Mm -hmm. So, but, so uh, what what time are we looking at now? Is this 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, 12, 13 years ago. So, but I. I'm not only showing this for nostalgia. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I am nostalgic of this area because I spent so many hours <laughs> working with this board. Uh, I mean, by this time, I was the only one with a LoRa demodulator in my hands. Um, but uh, it's it's also to say that this board was really cheap. So as as uh, entrepreneurs, we 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 could we could just we we, we just had to invest our time and efforts. But yeah. money wise, it was really I mean, that, that was only 100 or 200 euros to, to buy mm, this board. So yeah. all the development work was done on some, on such super cheap equipment. So there they are, and, and today is the same. Yeah, exactly. So so why is this then? Why is this so cheap? How did you manage to do that? Is this? Well, then it's just, only... I mean, the, the board happens to be cheap, and we, we wanted to design something which run on on on, a ch on cheap hardware. Therefore, we could we could yeah. afford cheap. FPGA boards to mimic this cheap hardware. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's uh, yeah. if you design cheap from from the beginning, well, it also pays you uh, in, in in lower investment. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. So how, how would you go about then? So you have this 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 board. You managed to to send signals. Um, so th this board was just, was this board was just the uh, LoRa uh, uh, modem. Uh, the digital part of it, mm -hmm. and then uh, with this IP, Nicola made up the first uh, modem plus radio. So and then we had the the uh, we had things to do demonstrations. But that that's 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 when we really started to to begin in the story because initially it started as a technical challenge, really. Yeah. And, and so what was your what were your your ideas when you started this? Do you have this idea in mind to to really Find, did you already solve this this gap in the market for long range low power communication? N not really. Honestly, we we, we init initially thought of um, long range walkie talkies. So that's not what happened. Not, well, some some are doing this. Some folks are doing mm -hmm. this in the US. Uh, Bertooth is doing this now, um, but uh, that that didn't really happen. Um, we we also talk of uh, uh, long range remote controls because. Uh, we happen to to fly, uh, I mean, remote control planes, and happen to mm. lose lose some of them from time to time. Yeah, but that, yeah, I mean, that was just um, to play. Um, but we quickly um, we quickly made demonstration to metering guys for point to point metering, drive by metering. They initially they didn't be, didn't believe us, and then we knew we had something good because we knew that what what we had was was real and and the first demonstration managed to convince them so this is where we started to to believe in what we had in you know hands yeah. and then semtech came in we 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 were acquired by semtech semtech invested and still invests uh, a lot of, of of money and efforts and resources in tulora so which is why we are we're having this um, this great story yeah That's, um, exactly yeah yeah great um and so there was i think 2012 when when semtech came uh yeah. with, when this acquisition was taking place and and semtech was uh, was heavily investing in this technology so could you guide us in, in the uh, like in in the process of what what happened next so we had this great point to point technology and we soon realized that with this range we could we could we could make networks. We could build networks, uh, networks with with bet, better range than two G. So mm -hmm. with fewer gateways than two G base station. Uh, so so we, we so we could we could we could build a network. So that's um, yeah. that's what it was not called IoT yet, or maybe just the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. But we saw that. We could do networks, and for that we needed many partners. We needed an alliance. We needed uh, we needed you. We needed TTN. We needed uh, uh, IT um, 
IT people, we need gateway manufacturers, yeah. device manufacturers, operators, public operators, etc. Yeah. We need we because need a, only the technology, then you're not there yet. You need this whole ecosystem, right, to adopt yes. this technology and to, to bring it to market. But, but is this then we, we, we could have we, we could have decided to do it just by ourselves. I mean Semtech could have decided to do it to do that just on its own, like maybe Sigfox did. That's if if if, if you if you mm -hmm. look at this. So so Semtech went in another direction. Um, and I think that was clever because it's the key to adoption is is to make everyone su successful. To, to have to have to have a good adoption, you need that. I mean, all the partners we invest uh, in in the technology uh, are successful financially, and also that all the partners are successful technically because it's there is some co-innovation risk and there is and, and some adoption risk, which is all about uh, everyone taking his share in the value, yeah. its share in the value. So that's that's uh, and again, same tech plays. And played very, really fair on this. Uh, I think so. That's uh, that's that's one of the reasons of the success. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Like I think Centec is, is one of the leading partners in this whole ecosystem, and um, it, it it you know that also Centec is an objective partner. Uh, it does not choose one partner over the other, but it's really there to to bring this Laura and Laura One technology forward. Yeah, as 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 yeah, as much as we can. We so we we had to so the Laura Alliance needed to define the protocol. So that's what yeah. happened first, but then it was really just the beginning. There, there was the network server, uh, which 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 had to be implemented. Yeah. The the uh, a reference stack uh, yeah. for for the end devices. Maybe maybe one step back. So uh, first it was what well, like you, your company, then at some point uh, kind of Semtech became involved, and then I guess the next step was that the Lore Alliance came into existence, uh, and and kind of further develop this this standard. Yeah, Is that correct. Yeah. What was kind of the objective for the Lore Alliance? Well, at the beginning, it was really to define a protocol. Uh, so it was not even called Lore Alliance first. It was a group of companies, uh, and here Nicolas Sarnin played, uh, I mean, a central role, and also François Sforza and and François Ede, uh, the other co-founders of of uh, Cicleo. And and at the beginning, it was to to go up the stack, to to make a point to point technology, uh, uh, network topology, mm -hmm. a network technology, sorry. Yeah. So that's, 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 uh, that's why the protocol, which was not called the LoRaWAN protocol yet, uh, mm -hmm. came into, came in, came, came into life. And then just to define this protocol, there were partners and then the LoRa Alliance was basically created out of, out of that and, and, and kept and grow uh, and grew and kept on growing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, one, one, one central technical element is the gateway, because if you don't yep. have a gateway, so Semtech designed the gateway chip and mm -hmm. partner with gateway manufacturers, with many gateway manufacturers, so to, to, to have this, um, all these gateways for all the regions, for the US, for Europe, for, for Asia, uh, and small gateways, big gateways, carrier grade yep. gateways, chip gateways, whatever breed of gateways. So. And, and Semtech only provided the, the chip to do that and didn't try to gather the value out of this. Um, yeah, that's, exactly. That's again a way to make the adoption chain uh, successful at every yeah. stage. Yeah, exactly. So this decision to make a, a gateway topology allowing for these big networks to arrive, that, that for sure was a big milestone that led to this global adoption. So, so what do you think were kind of the big milestones that yeah, we've met in order to make it the globally adopted technology as of today? Well, one of the, well, the, when the op public operators came in, I mean, was really, I think, uh, the greatest milestones. That, that, that means that this was, this was to happen. It's, 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 it, it's a heavy investment from the uh, public operators. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, for it started in Europe, but also in India, in South Korea. So that that was that was one of the first milestones. Then yeah. the other ways to do uh, coverage more uh, with private networks or with community networks, 
like TTN or, or TTI. That's that's also that was also a good milestone to show that there, there was versatility, there was diversity in the deployment models. Yeah. But and and then uh, all the milestones, important milestones, are the number of certified devices. I mean, actual end devices being certified to be LoRa One compliant. We are, we are more than 400, maybe 500 now. So that's this shows that we are, we are. I mean, the, the LoRa One networks are are to be successful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can imagine that once these network, those big national um, uh, network carriers, when they start adopting the technology, then it's really going to fly. As yeah. Suddenly you have like a big city or maybe a whole country that has access to this technology. Yeah, and of course, first commercial successes for this for these operators. That's that's yeah. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, nice. Great. So um, yeah, maybe like. We, we 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 thought we looked a little bit back in time, um, mm -hmm. but if you look at the past, then also you see like always technologies they come and go. Like I think yeah. they're very. Yeah. Like, I think no technology is there forever. Um, so I think now we have a very good foundation to really build this technology upon, and it's already used globally. But like, how? What do you think if you look into the future? Is this technology going to stay there? Is this going to be improved? Modified, modified, like what would you say so, there? So you're right that technology hype come and goes. So so some some stay, some some go away. But uh, as you as you would expect, I, I I'm convinced that Laura One is here to stay. Um, first of all, we we manage to to overcome the adoption, the emergent challenge. I mean, as an ecosystem, that's very difficult that's that's difficult and that was not that was not given that wasn't a given um and if you look at the sorry what just at google trends uh, that mm -hmm. so that's that's just google trends i i i i, I looked up uh, last week so that you can say that Sigfox and NBOT uh, surfed on the uh, IoT hype, but that's not that's not the case. We're still growing despite the end of this hype on IoT. So that's yeah, that's an indication that, yeah, that we're going to very be clearly game. showing that Laura One is only growing in yeah. popularity. So that's indication that we are. A winning ecosystem. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So and and then uh, there's there's what we what we add, what we the the the, the, the features that we add to the LoRaWAN protocol and the LoRaWAN uh, system to to be to be more successful. For instance, we work a lot on coverage, increase coverage, have really ubiquitous coverage, and for that we're doing the D2D relay, the relay mode. Mm -hmm. We're doing much cheaper gateways. Yeah, so we're aiming at super cheap gateways. We're doing so. So maybe go back to the first one. Yeah. So the relay. So you're working on that, and that is to basically it's kind of a a hub from an end device. It is, so it it is a, yeah. It, sorry, it is a battery operated relay that you place in a location where you have fair coverage from the from the gateway, mm -hmm. and you use that to reach a couple of tens maybe some 12 end devices, which are not non-reachable by the gateway. So it's, mm, it's, yeah. it's really a way to ex expand the coverage to the last 10 meters or to the last building penetration. And that relay is going to be battery operated. So super simple to install and of course cheap. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's that's a very nice one, yeah. The so, second point you were mentioning, cheaper gateways. Well, cheaper, yes, cheaper gateways are, I mean, when you have power and Ethernet connection, then y y you want to install a, a gateway and you want that gateway to be as cheap as possible. Yeah. Like to, to have, to make coverage really ubiquitous. The next thing is uh, roaming. So we've been working on roaming. We still continue to work on roaming. Um, we, we work also on, making the interfaces 
completely standardized, so which which will help yeah. with roaming. And who who is spending on this? Is this Semtech or is this the Lora Alliance? Oh, it's the Lora Alliance and the operators in the Lora Alliance who yeah. come together. Uh, they, 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 it's it's they, there's, uh, there's a group called the Network Operator Forum, where where all this is is happening. Well, of yeah. course, Semtech is part of exactly that group, but thing. that's yeah. that's we're just a partner here. Yeah. We're not driving. Um, the the other thing which is going to add ubiquitous coverage is the use of yeah. satellites. So the use of so there is this new modulation, LRFHSS, so long range frequency hopping spectrum, mm -hmm. which is great to to reach many devices from a single gateway. So that's very mm -hmm. good for um, wh when you have a single gateway, for instance, yeah. in, a, in a rural environment and want to reach many, many devices which are far away. <clears throat> but the extreme case of that is a satellite, because of course, a satellite is a single gateway talking to many devices, yeah. which are very far away. So we have you know, a few companies already doing this uh, and also connected with TTN. Yeah. Um, so could like, you explain, like, like, could you explain what is then exactly the difference between normal LoRa modulation and this LHSS? Uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to pronounce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, um, so from, from a feature point of view, LRFHSS is unidirectional because it, it has more capacity at mm. low data rate than, yeah. than LoRa SF12. It doesn't have more capacity than LoRa SF5, 6, 7, 8, but it has more capacity than LoRa SF12 and 11. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's, it's good when you're far away and many devices are talking yeah. to the gateway. And, but, but the cost of that is much higher complexity in the receiver, which is why it's only unidirectional from the end device to the gateway. Mm, yeah. The end device could not, with, with decent hardware, receive this, uh, yeah. this modulation. That would yeah, be too yeah, complex. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the main difference. Yeah. But then on, at, at the same data rate, it, it, it has equivalent uh, performance. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So this is actually really exciting. So we, we're already stressing the term long range yeah. connectivity with, with five to 10 kilometers. So that's one part, one part of the future. So more, better coverage with all yeah. these ways to do better coverage. We're also working on the application. So better support of applications, for instance, standardize the application payload. So mm -hmm. soon anyone will be able to publish its, its API and here's how to encode my application payload, this uh, sensor application payload, and here's how to decode it. Therefore, mm -hmm. you, when you receive an application payload, you know what kind of device it is and what is the, how to decode it. So that's, that's we're going so to So kind of that. a unified way of sending data. It, it kind so of, you yeah. You always right. know it's, that in a certain like type, you know that, for example, it's temperature and it's humidity. Yeah, you know it's temperature and it's humidity, and you know how to decode the bytes into mm. actual temperature and humidity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 obviously a way to standardize things better and yeah. make things simpler for everyone. Uh, there are such existing application layers like wireless embus, which describes how to uh, transmit data from a from a meter, mm -hmm. and we are we are building uh, support for this within within LoRa One. We also have a more generic application layer. It's not really an application; it's IP. So we have we have a, a translation layer from LoRa One to IPv6. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to open a, a number of of applications, as you can expect, because many many applications run over IP. So then we will, we will be able to have IP support. And we are doing this. Uh, so it, this was defined at the IETF, and they defined mm -hmm. something very clever, where the IPv6 header is is compressed so much that well, it's it's compressed down to a single byte in some cases. So it's a uh, this um, this will not cost a lot of time on air. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so there's a big, big list of what you're still working on, and all the new features that yes. we're gonna. Yes. So, but but I really see LoRaWAN as as a technology platform. 
where where with with various uh, deployment models mm -hmm. with a strong diversity of applications and use cases yeah. and it's it's a way as as an ecosystem it's a way to explore and to make the future yeah, yeah exactly yeah uh, we so. will find with all that diversity we'll be able to find the i mean the winning application the winning use cases yeah, yeah, exactly nice nice so there's many more really exciting things to come so yeah, thank you for yeah. sharing that so we actually have a few more minutes for questions. So uh, so if people have a few interesting questions that they want to address to Olivier, then, then now is the chance. So drop a message in the um, in the chat and, uh, and, and I'll uh, relate it to Olivier. So Paul has a question about these preambles. Um, so maybe that also relates to the first part of your presentations where you only, gauges only look at the, uh, the frequency and not so much to the timing. So, is there a reason why we have eight preambles? Is that a, a magic number? Is there a reason why we chose that specific number? So it needs to be more than one, two, three. It needs to be more than four or five because sometimes you, you receive a strong signal. And when you receive a strong signal, you need the automatic gain control to work. And this can only happen during the preamble. Therefore, you need a few symbols just for this automatic gain control to converge. Then you also need to have it long because you want to uh, aggregate, sum up energy to step out of the noise. Uh, LoRa is capable of detecting a signal with a single symbol. However, uh, if you try to average eight, well, sum up eight symbols, it's going to give you a couple of three, four dBs better sensitivity. So. Eight preambles is a trade-off between sensitivity and and overhead. Uh, with twelve preambles, you, you will have slightly better sensitivity, but more overhead. Yeah. And that's that's. Um, but but for instance, in the in the relay mode, we're going to send not infinite preambles, but very long preambles, uh, which will be half a second or one second length. And the relay, which is battery operated, is only going to wake up a little bit in the middle of that second and find that long preamble and then receive the packet. So that's mm. that. so a long preamble can be used to do um, wake up uh, sequences. Yeah, 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 exactly. Nice, interesting. So before, like, wait a bit to see if new questions come in. So when you look back at the past, 12, 13 years, like, what, are you, what are you most proud of? Well, so really that's, I mean, I am an engineer. I've been, I've been doing R&D stuff for, for years and it's really only the first time that my work is used. So I'm proud that my work is eventually being used. Um, it happens that some of my bugs are used by so many people, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, but that's that's and also of course I'm really proud of the really of the uh, what what it triggered the ecosystem this yeah. enthusiasm this this growth this uh, this, um, this this applications there's one thing I mean the IoT we're doing with LoRa One is is a very um, this low power wider network IoT we're doing IoT in a very special way we everything we do or most of what we do is about process uh, efficiency improving process reducing losses so mm -hmm. we, we we actually and and it, it has to be so because the in in the b2b um, uh, world people only invest if the, if there is a return on investment to have a return on investment on an existing process you need to meet you need to make that process cheaper yeah so overall if you if you have an roi using LoRa one it means that you are saving on resources because yeah. in the end it's cheaper for the same so it's the same service for a lower price or a lower footprint. So that's a. So I think that we we, we can we can actually help the planet by yeah. by by reducing losses. I mean, water, etc. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, or, st yeah. or stolen bikes in in the Netherlands. Yeah, um, I think we've already saw very few very interesting examples during the week. So this morning, uh, Catherine from Mass explained that they use Laura One to better monitor the uh, environment for turtles because turtles only 
made if they're like ideal conditions and if the sand is too hot or too humid then then, then they are not willing to do so and they use even lower one sensors to well to, to create better environments for these animals so it's actually being used to to make a a, a, yeah, a big impact in our planet yeah and, and also so um uh, a company was was doing forest monitoring mm -hmm. one yeah uh, and and fire prevention i mean and nowadays fire all a big issue and 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 i really think this this these guys uh should receive um carbon credits for what they're doing I mean, yeah. they're effectively if you monitor a forest and prevent fire in that forest you're you're yeah. helping a lot or or co2 um, footprint yeah balance. exactly yeah yeah exactly maybe that's also a bit of the the, the answer to um, uh, to the question that just got asked is about the uh like your view on the environmental impact of LoRa and LoRa one and i think it's it's mainly this and it enables way more technologies that is not but 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 there's one one more thing to it um since the protocol and the modulation have been designed to be low power we can run on batteries but batteries are not perfect we could run instead on energy harvesting and energy harvesting both at the um, PMIC, so that's the power management IC, so the power management uh, part, so which is using the harvester to charge, and both the harvesting part, so that's a solar panel, organic solar pan uh, organic uh, photovoltaic panel, or maybe vibration harvester or whatever, mm -hmm. or temperature, well, uh, temperature uh, gradient harvester. This so vibration and temperature, so it's not only sol solar panels you're talking about, they're different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you know, you have solar panel uh, which are from silicon, you have solar panel which are organic, so those ones which are thinner, flexible, mm -hmm. which are a bit transparent, you can even color them, you can have you can give them fancy shapes. Yeah, so that's uh, that's one part. The other, then the power management. So, with this, and this, this is relatively cheap. I mean, for, for a few dollars, you have a complete harvesting solution. This means that you can build devices which, which are perpetual, which, I mean, which live as long as the rechargeable battery they use is, is, is still alive. Yeah. So that, that can be for really, really long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Um, so I see some new questions coming in. Let, let's have a look. Um, so I, I think I saw also some questions on the on the relays coming in. So also from Kevin. Um, so so regarding the relays, is it a protocol, physical software change on the end device, or is it a completely new chip? So it's it's a uh, it's only a um, protocol upgrade. So it's new functions in the protocol in the LoRaWAN protocol. Uh, so it's it's the same chip, but you need to you will need to update the um, the application stack. Right. The, uh, you will also need to update the uh, the network server because it's it's it, it has a counterpart in the in the network. So it's um, yeah, 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 exactly. Nice. So, um, do you have more ambitions with regards to LoRa and LoRa One? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, again, I think we. I mean, we are already part of the digital transformation of the world. That's that's this digital transformation is going to happen. Yeah, we know that we're going to be one of the successful technologies, one of the successful ecosystem. So, uh, so the ambition is that we make it in a in a green way. We make it to to make better business, better life for people, and 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 saving well the resources, not yeah. the planet, but the resources of the planet where where we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. that's 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 really what we and it, I'm not talking about just about endangered species or rhinos. That's that's one one thing, but really saving on resources, saving on transport, saving that's that they are they are. It's not always massive. Sometimes it's only five, ten percent savings, but that's 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 helping in the right direction. Again, same service for for fewer resources uh, yeah. used. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's that. I think that's really a great ambition. We are, we are actually compatible with uh, degrowth. I mean, LoRaWAN success is compatible with, uh, 
you know, the, the growth of the yeah. economy. Yeah, and nice. Go, yeah. Well, like it really, the knife cuts at both ends. So at the one end, you uh, like you, you reduce resources, which which um, is also in, in like eventually has a as a ROI, so it has a business case. Um, but of course, it also has a big environmental impact. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and 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 and, it, and this is a kind of savings where there is no rebound effect. I mean, the rebound effect is if you have a more fuel efficient car, eventually you may use more fuel because you will drive longer because it's cheaper yeah. to drive. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. if you're paying less for your uh, home insurance, because you're doing, you're having less uh, water leaks or mm -hmm. because the water leaks are detected earlier and they cost less to the insurance. I mean, they cost less to repair. You're not going to buy a second insurance. You're just going to pay less for your insurance and you're going to have less damage from this uh, water leakage, which yeah. is, uh, which happens to be the, one of the first, um, the, the, the biggest um, uh, money uh, spent by the yeah, home yeah. insurances. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So we also saw something coming in about 2.4 gigahertz. I think there's also some developments going on where you want to run this modulation on that specific frequency. Is there any any update you can give there or any of your thoughts? So we we uh, we proposed this to the Loha Alliance uh, a few quarters ago, maybe two years ago. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, there, were, there were some traction, but not enough to make it through the alliance. Mm -hmm. But still, we continue because we believe it's, it, it has very, very interesting uh, features. First of all, it's, it's worldwide. You, you have a single queue to cover your worldwide operation. It happens to propagate slightly better in, 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 uh, in metallic environments, such like warehouses mm. or, <clears throat> or boats. So in, in some specific environments, it, it propagates better than uh, sub gigahertz, so it has it has interest. It also has you have there's more bandwidth, therefore there's more there's more data rate. So you have lower yeah. you, you you can have route for lower latency, more more data. So for industrial IoT, that's that's also a good thing. So we still invest on it. We we believe in it, and um, you're going soon to see um, interesting chips uh, which. Which which will make uh, the adoption of 2.4 gigahertz uh, easier. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. So I think this is this is really interesting to what we're seeing now in the ecosystem. So we figured out how it works. So we figured out how this modulation works. We now have devices and we have gateways adopting it. And actually, this also sparked so many new innovations and developments in this market. So mm -hmm. from relays to 2.4 gigahertz to like many other points that that we probably are still gonna invent in the upcoming years. So I think that's a, that's a really nice thing that we are seeing these days and it can only grow in the upcoming years. Yeah, so can I answer one of the questions uh, which I- Yeah, which please go ahead. Chat? So, so saturation when many devices get installed. So which, which, is, which, which may be foreseen as, as, as a problem. So uh, I would like to be clear on this, that there is no such a problem. We have not seen such a problem. Uh, assuming that exactly we densify and use adaptive data rate, and also that we use uh, that we have a good network server which is capable of doing the right analytics to to um, lower the data rate, increase the data rate, lower the power, uh, select the right frequencies, select the right number of retransmission to to just to optimize the network. And the, so the key to to network efficiency. Is, is to have the, the right analytics and maybe at the, either at the network level or at the gateway level. And if, if I can show one last thing uh, yeah, is, is, a, is more analytics, which, which are allowed by, so, so that's, that's just the thing I've, I've done the measurement with, but here is a drive test and Every line, every colored line, the color doesn't mean anything, it's just a different frame. But the line is the variation, represents the variation of signal to noise ratio of a frame during that frame. So for instance, this one is only going down and that, that is probably 15 dB. So you see that there is a strong variation of signal within that frame. And that's because 
the, it is a drive test. So the, the device is moving. Therefore, there are strong variation. When you are very close to the gateway, the gateway was there. The, the variations are even higher. But this is not only interesting to, to detect that the device is moving. To detect that the device is moving is very interesting for adaptive data, right? Because if a device is moving, you know it's going to experience good and bad situation. You, you want to know that. But SNR variation over, over time is also useful to detect that there has been a collision uh, or that there is that the interference is going on or bursted interference is going on. So it's a way to monitor accurately the environment and therefore to optimize better the network to 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 increase the capacity of the network or to increase the quality of service to the devices so that's um, so i i really think that we should do more we not semtech i mean our partners either the either the ttn or tti of the world or the gateway manufacturers to look at well to provide data analytics at the gateway level to really optimize the network performance. That's interesting. I didn't know that that even by analyzing the packet itself, just the, the, the radio uh, signal, you can derive lots of interesting conclusions. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and for instance, and, and that's, that's only available on the S61303 chip mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a side metric of timestamps. But if you see a packet with a CRC error and, and observe that the SNR was good from the beginning of the packet then was really bad at the end it means that it has suffered an interference therefore yeah. you know where you lose that packet so it's either you may go away of that frequency if this happens to many devices or you may just think it well it's bad like it's just a collision that that's you can you can have a lot of insight on yeah. on what's happening in your network by doing this kind of analytics interesting very interesting point Great. So I think we we almost we we already over forty five minutes the, like the amount of time we planned for this. Oh, so yeah. um, maybe the last question. One more question then. Yeah, yeah. Do Would you, you have any more? Will ever... Oh, you okay, two more questions. Let's two more first questions. Do, do the one for with uh, with Jose. Do you think the Laura Laura will ever be regulated yeah. by government? So it is it is already it is already regulated. We 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 operate in unlicensed bands, but. There is regulation going going on there, and the LoRa Alliance is following very very carefully the regulations. So either the spectrum regulation or even the the uh, data regulation. For instance, there are regulation on security, which are going to happen in the U.S. So today they are mandatory if you want to do business with the um, administrations. Uh, probably later they will be mandatory at all if you want to do business at all. And the same is going to happen in Europe. So these regulations on security will apply to any IoT device. So it's really important that we take care of that. So we take care of that in the uh, regulatory committee. We also take care of that in the security committee, of course, in the case of security. But many regulations are there. Yeah. Uh, in the regulatory committee, we also talk to the uh, regulators ahead of um, of the regulation coming in. So that's that's really now that's really something which is really important because access to the spectrum, that's really what we want to ensure that we have correct access to the spectrum. Yeah. yeah so we yeah. discuss with regulators and uh, from time to time, we manage to open a new country for for for, um, for our LoRaWAN operation. And the last example is Israel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, interesting. So finally, any advice you still want to give to the people listening? Oh yeah, that that one that's that's easy. So mm -hmm. it's I mean try to have fun in your work. I mean or maybe not try. Decide to have fun in your work and and um and take risk the, the in, in your career. I mean the risk is to is to miss opportunities by not taking risk. So that's uh that's what I did and I failed a few times and and eventually it paid off. So yeah, please please I, I reset my career 15 years ago. I <clears throat> I started in a startup which didn't made it through. That, that's that's that thing. Yeah, that's my advice. Okay. Have fun and take yeah, risks. Have fun. Yeah, exactly. All right. So big round of applause for Olivier. Thanks a lot for for your time. 
was really great to talk to you and to to hear your insights about this technology. Yeah, thanks. And, thanks. Um, what all started with with online dating eventually led to uh, the <laughs> online course that we're in today. Exactly. All right. Thanks Have a lot, Jay. And uh, Have a good day, everybody. Hear more from you. Bye soon. bye. Bye bye.